John Bowden from Rock History Music. Hi, everyone. More sad news in the world of rock and roll. It never ceases to amaze me, but unfortunately, we have a lot of aging rockers that are not hanging around anymore. Uh, Ronnie Hawkins has passed away. He was 87 years old, uh, more than 25 albums, more than anything. He covered some well-known songs from some artists that we, we all know, he covered Bo Diddley's Who Do You Love, Young Jesse's Mary Lou, of course, Ruby Baby, Chuck Berry's 30 Days. He called his 40 Days. But he had a lot of nicknames and he had a larger than life uh, 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 persona. And you had to have chops to basically be in one of his hands, most notable bands, most notably the Hawks. Uh, but he had nicknames like Ronnie, Romp and Ronnie, uh, Mr. Dynamo, or of course everyone called him uh, the Hawk. He was a recruiter. He recruited a lot of people onto, I've uh, got my light showing there. He recruited a lot of, uh, of the band members from the band before they were the band. Um, but one thing I'd forgotten from the 80s, because we used to do a lot of things on Ronnie Hawkins in the 80s when I first got into radio, and that was uh, Roy Buchanan, who as well has passed away, was an early member of his band. Pat Travers as well, because he's... Ran into Pat after he moved to Canada, and he saw him playing, and he went, hey, man, why don't you join my band? Of course, Pat Travers went on to do amazing things as well. But like I said, most notably, members of the band, Robbie Robertson, Lee Von Helm, Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, Garth Hudson. When John Lennon and Yoko Ono were doing their, their peace sit-in, he invited them over to spend some time with them, too. They were promoting the you know world peace. Um, in the 70s, like I said, in the 70s, he noticed Pat Travers after he moved to, to, on, uh, to Canada. And it was Conway Twitty, of all people, that told him, hey, why don't you move to Canada? Why don't you tour in Canada? Came to Canada, fell in love with the place, and settled in the Ontario area where he had lived most of his life. In the um, He had a home in Mississauga, which is where he ended up being, but... Uh, what a recruiter, you know, a lot of the great musicians did that. Miles Davis, Miles Davis was famous for bringing people in his band, some amazing players, but um, Ronnie Hawkins did the same thing, you know, and knew, I ran into a lot of players, Greg Godovitz is one guy from the band Gatto, who, who was a close friend of him, and, and in order to play with Ronnie Hawkins' band, it was like a boot camp, and Ronnie wasn't always there, but there was a boot camp where basically you... you <laughs> You had to get your, you had to tie your shoelaces, cross your T's, dot your I's to basically get into this band. You know, a lot of people are saying he was a rockabilly, rockabilly artist, but he leaned on country and folk and, and uh, but really good time music, you know, and the bands that he, that he created were just simply amazing. So, uh, you know, um, a, a sad, another sad day. He'd had an illness for a while, and it was well known that he was on life support for the last few days, and people were talking about that. But, you know, legends are leaving us. Um, I've got a lot of uh, comments here I want to get to. Melody, you're always first. Thank you. Hey, from Saskatchewan, Oscar Stern. Yeah, he helped uh, our friends in the Ukraine. Norm, oh my, Dylan must be weeping. <laughs> well, Dylan had cast Ronnie Hawkins in a movie, wanted Ronnie Hawkins to play him. And, of course, Ronnie Hawkins was in uh, a few movies himself because he, he branched off into acting. Melody says, rest in peace, Hawk. James Bashirs, good afternoon, John. Hey, James, nice to have you on here. Tor Tor Porco, imagine what it must be, have been like to see him and others play in Young Street Clubs back in the day. Well, like I said, he saw Pat Travers play and he decided to say, hey, you're really, really good. Um, why don't you join my band? Man, you know, we don't have a cause of death, but he was he had a long illness. He was dealing with some things. Um, uh, Glenn Ryan. Hi, Glenn. Says we're losing so many. Must be our age. Well, most people watch this channel are watching their parents leave us, watching our parents get ill, watching our parents lose their licenses, and all that stuff that happens with age, um, that watching their bodies changing, our bodies are changing. It's just... 
when someone dies, sometimes someone will come on here and say, well, everyone dies. Well, yeah, just let people mourn. You know, aren't we allowed to mourn the people we want to mourn? Aren't we allowed to? And someone, every time I do one of these, someone says, well, let's, let's ce- celebrate them while they're alive. That's a good idea. If we have time to do that, because we're dealing with so many um, uh, obituaries. Gina says, greetings from L.A. Hey, Gina, nice to have you on here. James Bashir is rest in peace, Hawk. Norm says, yeah, it's true. Everyone loved Ronnie. You know, romping Ronnie. Sad, 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 uh, Craig Danker says. Uh, okay, this person's going to be uh, blocked from the channel. Hold on. Sorry, guys. The band movie was called The Last Waltz, by the way. Uh, that's what you're asking? Yeah, and he was on there as well. Rick May said it best, uh, heaven must be forming a, a, a mighty fine band. Ghost Rider, just watched him in that Bowie movie, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, um, oh, in the band movie, yeah. Not Bowie movie, band movie. By the way, that's uh, Cold Brew. Melody Era, The Last Waltz was great. I haven't seen that since... I think the last time I watched it was in the early 80s. Okay, I'm going to reiterate just some of the things that, that came through today from the wire service. He was 87 years old. Um, he had more than 25 albums and he's known for doing a lot of um, covers of other people's music. Um, Who Do You Love, Bo Diddley's uh, song, Young Jesse's Mary Lou, uh, a lot of standards, Ruby Baby, Chuck Berry's 30 Days, he called his 40 Days. And it was the... I, I remember in the 80s when I got into radio, I, I called them Rock and Ronnie, and someone says, it's Romp and Ronnie. I'll never forget that. And I felt very silly because then I was in my early 20s, and music history was maybe not my strong point. And um, you know quickly when someone tells you that, you go, I didn't say it on the air, thank God. But he was also known as Mr. Dynamo, but most, most people called him the Hawk, of course. When you said the Hawk, that says something about someone's career, right? You can say one word and people know who you're talking about. He was born in Huntsville, Arkansas, but he, when he was nine years old, his family moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas. And then after Conway Twitty came up to him and said, hey man, have you toured Canada? You should try touring Canada. He was an American, but fell in love with Canada and ended up ultimately landing in the Mississauga, Ontario area. And he had a place there where you'd go and audition. Um, he, in 64, he became a permanent resident of Canada, but he would, like, you'd go see his house, and it was basically a boot camp. And it was, you had to have your chops together to play with uh, Romp and Ronnie. So in December 69, he invited John Lennon and Yoko Ono to, over, to spend some time when they were doing that, that peace love in. One of the things that people forget sometimes is how many, re- he recruited so many people. Roy Buchanan was one. That's one I completely forgot till I read that. I, mean, I remember knowing that in the 80s. But he uh, saw him play and said, um, you're good. Pat Travers, same thing. Like Pat Travers. And uh, he recognized the talent right away. But most notably, of course, the people in the band, Lee Von Helm, Robbie Robertson, Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, Garth Hudson. And uh, like I said, it was in the early 70s for, for Pat Travers. But I'll get to some of your comments, and then I'm going to do a short thing on our Canadian channel. I'd be remiss if I didn't do this on our Canadian channel. Even though he was an American, and it happens, Americans move to Canada and fall in love with the country and its people. People never say that enough about Canadians, and I'm a Canadian, that there's certain places in this country that when you move there, more than falling in love with what's around you, the scenery, you fall in love with the people because we're very friendly. I just moved from the West Coast in Calgary to the East Coast in Moncton, New Brunswick. I'm from 
uh, uh, New Brunswick originally. I grew up in New Brunswick. I wanted to come home for my mom. But I came here and it, people were so friendly. I can't imagine living anywhere else because of the friendliness of the people. And Ronnie always said that. He says, you know, he, he, um, he's a real people person. But when you audition for his band, and I found this out recently through interviewing some folks, he wasn't always there when you were auditioning. Only if it was really important, he would show up. The band would audition you. So there you go. Might not have been the case in the early days. Of course, he's getting older. Uh, hit the like buttons. Tortor Porco says, yes, you're not liking the fact that Ronnie Hawkins, the hawk, passed away. You're liking the fact that we're on here reporting on it. So I always say, please press the like button because it does make a big difference in how this video uh, ranks and it affects how ultimately the channel ranks, right? We report on rock and roll. Sometimes people will say, why do you do the obituaries? Why not? If I'm reporting on what's happening in rock and roll, that's the first thing I should be reporting on. People are always funny about that kind of stuff, but this is what we do. This is what I do for a living. I'm a broadcaster, yes, but there you go. Uh, Gary True. Hey, Gary. Hello. There were so many guys come through the Ronnie Hawkins band. Yeah. Pat Travers, Roy Buchanan, the boys from the band, and many, many more. Tor Tor Porco. Hit the like button. Thank you. Melody R. My friend lives in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Oh, cool. I've never been there. Craig Dankers. Eric Clapton's strap came loose in that movie and almost dropped his strat. Al Broderick. The Hawk was the star of Tears and Not Enough documentary and a great sense of humor. So true. Rest in peace, cowboy. Really, really, a larger than life. You know how it is? You watch those crime shows? You watch the crime shows? And you ever notice that everyone who gets, who, who, who's left the planet, I, want, I have to be careful of my words because we'll lose the uh, monetization. But everyone who's left the planet walks in a room and lights it up. Ever notice that? Everybody who passed away um, in these crime shows Oh, she walked into the room. He walked into the room and lit it up. The reason I think a lot of people say that is because there was a life being there and now there's no more person there. doesn't mean everyone who left us uh, lights up a room. Ronnie Hawkins lit up the room. And I'm not being sarcastic. He was that type of person. Never met him. Certainly interviewed a lot of people who knew him. Um Marsh Tube, 82. Damn, this is sad. Uh, I don't know how to say your new username. Ronnie Hawkins and the Hawks. Sad to see Ronnie go. Only Robbie Robertson and Garth Hudson are still with us. Yeah, true. Melody R. Shared it on my Facebook group in Arkansas. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Gediminas. Robbie Robertson's book, Testimony, is a great read. Details history of Ronnie and the Hawks. Thank you very much. Another sad loss, John Adams. Thank you, everyone, for coming on here. I think it's important for, if anyone wants to share any stories on Ronnie Hawkins, he certainly was, I think Greg Godovitz told me this from Gatto, and he knew him quite well, that you were, if you met Ronnie, oh, I don't want to sneeze, sorry. I have sneezing fits. If you met Ronnie Hawkins, you'd never forget it. He's just one of those guys. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it was Greg, again, who told me that when you, when you talked to him, he was, there, he was there with you, man. So, may he rest in peace. Uh, 87 years old, that's a good life for someone who lived a rock and roll, you know, was there all the way. My dad passed away at 87 years old. Oh, got my purple Rock History Music Canada t-shirt. Purple's the best color for Rock History Canada. I've got one coming in. I'm still waiting for it. Oh my, someone just said something. Okay. I I just, I got rid of that that person. Did you see that? Did, did anybody see? Oh yeah, it's on here, right here. You guys all saw that? Yeah, I don't know why um, people come on here and spam. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why people do that. But anyway, uh, I've got 64 people on here. So if anyone wants to share some stories, if, if, especially if you met him or saw him in concert, your impressions, uh, that would be great. Uh, when I worked at a station in Edmonton, there was the management, for whatever reason, knew Ronnie. Uh, 
I'm not, but they, we weren't the format to play Ronnie Hawkins music, but we still did because I think the, the, the father of the company we worked for knew him well. So we just played his music a lot. And I was just getting into radio learning formats and going, you can do that? You can play Ronnie Hawkins on here? That's cool. I enjoy the music because it's fun music, right? Uh, Ronnie Hawkins music was a type of music that you'd think would be fun to play as well if you were a musician, right? Those covers were great. Melody R, he followed me here. Saw it. Thank you, Melody. Well, we got rid of him. John Adams. Why do people have to be disrespectful? Yeah, he was talking about that. Uh, I can't mention the, the, the username because the username will have this, this uh, video demonetized. So there you go. Kevin Hill. Hawkins was old at the last waltz. It seems to me anyway. I've always had the impression that he had um, lived a full life, let's just say. You know what I mean? 87 is a very ripe old age. Lee Child, you're very... Listen, when my dad, and my dad lived a, a rock and roll lifestyle, let's just say. My dad lived it. He was out there. He was on uh, train cars when he was very young, before he met my mom, traveling across the country, going through the, the Rocky Mountains. And my dad liked to party. My dad lived till he was 87 years old. And his hair was as dark as mine. For whatever reason, he lived a long life. My mother would go around. This is an example of 87. And you guys have all your examples of 87 or anyone in their 80s. Of going, most people, um, they're feeling it at 87. You know, almost everybody. So, rest in peace, Mr. Hawkins. Rest, R.I.P. rather. Arrow Clean, thanks for being on here. Please uh, press the like button, everyone. Techno Forever. Tears. Uh, Michelle La Laria. Respect for his music career. Rest in peace. Yeah. You know, we were doing the obituaries, Alan White, this week, where I think at one point we had like 300 people watching and just sort of being in shock of Alan White, the, the yes drummer, in case you're not a fan that he was on there and if you saw pictures of and and when my brother was sick by the way my brother was sick he said don't take pictures of me i don't want any pictures to look to, for me to be out there looking like i weigh 80 pounds he had sarcoma cancer and he passed away and i understood that because there's pictures it was pictures of alan white near the end where alan looked like he weighed a uh, 100 pounds he looked really, really thin. Because Alan usually have a big round face. He had just one of those big round faces. So he looked very, very frail. So people were... Uh, Michael DeRossier, the drummer for Heart, put up a picture. And of course, he put a picture up because he, he was a big fan. And Michael's one of my favorite drummers from the 70s. But I was shocked. I went, that's Alan White? You know, I'd love to get Michael DeRossier on here. But anyway, I'm, I'm starting to go off uh, 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 a little off now. So I'm going to reiterate this quickly before we go off the air. Oh, uh, she, she pronounced it for me. Larayu. Is that it? Larayu? Larayu. <laughs> I take breaks sometimes to read comments because I have to read them first because sometimes they're not where um, the comments are a little iffy. So Ronnie Hawkins, again, was 87 years old. Ronnie Hawkins had a lot of albums, more than, than 25. But then there were the, the compilations. And with an artist that's um, uh, sort of a, not a gold artist, but for an artist that's been around as long as him, there's always combinations. Oh, e -ah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> a lot of people know him from his cover of Bo Diddley's uh, Who Do You Love? Uh, Young Jesse's Mary Lou. Uh, I remember Ruby Baby, of course, Chuck Berry's 30 Days. But Ronnie Hawkins' version was 40 Days. And as I mentioned, when I got into radio, not on the air, but I was someplace where I called him Rockin' Ronnie, and someone says, it's Rompin' Ronnie. And, you know, if you, embarrassment is the best thing to get you on track to pay attention. Because when you're in your 20s and, you know, getting into radio, you don't realize yet that you cannot make a mistake on the radio because they'll, they'll kill you. It, YouTube's the same way. He also was called Mr. Dynamo, but of course, everyone knew him as the Hawk. If you say the Hawk, people know who you're talking about. You know what I mean? 
But 87 years old, man, that, that's pretty good. Uh, he was He's an American, born in Huntsville, Arkansas. When he was nine years old, his family moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Conway Twitty at one point told him, hey, man, if you toured Canada, you should tour Canada. It's really beautiful up there. He toured Canada and fell in love uh, with the country, like just fell in love with it and would end up living in, uh, having a home in Mississauga, Ontario, a place I have visited many times. It's a beautiful area. He knew John Lennon and invited John and Yoko during their, remember their big love-in, to spend some time with him. The thing that I like is the recruitment part. Like Roy Buchanan, who he lost as well, uh, joined the Hawks. All the members of the band joined Levon Helm, Robbie Robertson, Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, Garth Brooks. And then there was Pat Travers. He saw Pat Travers in the early 70s and said, hey, man, do you want to join the band? And, you know, Pat Travers is a god on guitar. So uh, there you go. Recruitment says something about an artist sometimes, right? The best example of recruitment is Miles Davis. Miles Davis would recognize talent and say, "You, I want you to join my band. Uh, some people arguably would say sometimes they were better than even Miles. Um, but with, as Greg Godovitz recently told me from Gatto, um, you had to be good to play in the band. Like you had to have chops. Because sometimes people make assumptions with certain types of music that you, oh, they're not as good as jazz musicians or something like that. Well, sometimes they're better or just as good as jazz musicians. So that's the thing. But... Yeah, big loss in music. But anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming on. I'm going to read a few more of your comments, but then I have to go on the Canadian channel and do a thing on the Canadian channel. Michelle says, saw also Dr. Hook with Ray Sawyer this day. Oh, cool. And with the beard, he looks like Charlie Daniels. Oh, you know what, Michelle? You're right. A lot of people, I remember... I don't know when it was. A lot of people say, you know, we talk about rockers who looked alike. We used to get together. We'd have parties and we, someone would, we usually go to the person who had a G9000 uh, Sansui receiver and L100 uh, JBL speakers. Uh, we had a, a couple of friends who had both and we'd go to their house because they had the best stereos. I never could afford that. Now they're really expensive. I need cold brew today. But yeah, we say rock stars who look alike. That, that definitely, Charlie Daniels and um, the Hawk. Hmm. I think I've read all the. Lee Child says Chuck um, lived a long time. He was eighty something. Yeah, eighty seven. Yeah, Fletch died, Michelle. Andy Fletcher from Depeche Mode and Ray Liotta. Um, it's been a weird week, but it's going to just before we leave. Yeah, you know, in the next little while, ain't going to be good. You know, and and I understand when people say, "Hey, come on, why are you making a big deal?" People die all the time. It's true. We need to mourn the people we want to mourn. We're just we kind of have that God given right. But just just hold on a little bit and let them, you know what, they, they, they come, they go, and I'm overstating the obvious, and I know I'm Mr. Cliche right now, but just be ready. There'll be more. And we'll, we'll be on here all talking about this as well. I wish there was a system where we could all kind of see each other and we could all talk about it, but then the spammers would come on, right? If anyone ever wants to come on with me when I do one of these things, um, we, we did this before, not for a long time, where we'd have a few people come on and we'd all talk about current, uh, current events in rock and roll. So there you go. Just It's John Bowden at iCloud.com. If you look up in the far right-hand side, there's an About button. You can press that, and my email address is right there. Uh, yeah, we will be hearing more stars gone. It's the plan, Lee Child. It is the plan. Well said. Cher, so sad, a legendary performer. Uh, D, uh, D R M M D R M W V R. You've been on here before. I know you probably told me how to say that. The Hawks' performance at the last waltz was so genuine. I think it gave an accurate idea 
of what they were like in the beginning with him. Well said. Wow. Should be a writer. Are you a writer? Sometimes people will say things on here. They're so eloquent. And poignant is the word, I think, of going, instead of using this much words, which a good writer usually uses that many words. I know that when I'm trying to come up with a short title and it's killing me to come up with a short title because I can't, I can't you know, shorten what I'm trying to say. So there you go. Thank you, everyone, for coming on today. We're going to go on the Canadian channel and do a similar thing because I'd be remiss if I didn't do th something on the Canadian channel. He was an American who ended up living in Canada in the Mississauga, Ontario. Um, so there you go. Peace, guys. Take care of yourself, okay?